Knock that arrogant fuck out of the sky. Agent, I've got reinforcements incoming. Keep them under pressure and stay sharp. That helo took out the master turret control. But if you can get to each turret, you should be able to realign them manually. Put some heat on this bastard. your back down there. Warning. Hostiles inbound on your position. It would be pretty damn helpful if you get those turrets and put them over the hard drive. inbound on your position. Reinforcements. Stay on them, Agent.
on, you got him! Put that asshole in the ground! killed the CEO of the last organized threat to Manhattan. Wasn't easy, and we lost a lot of good people, but you broke the LMB's back. Nobody's gonna be sweeping neighborhoods telling people join or die at gunpoint. Not without Bliss running the show. Still gonna be squads of them out there, but without the big man, we can handle them every day and twice on Sunday.
So, here we are, agents. We've made a pretty good team, I think. Done a lot for this city. A lot more than people thought we could. You and I both know this isn't exactly a happy ending. Our favorite homicidal traitor, Aaron Keener, is still out there. And he's still got Cherninko with him. Read Keener's file sometime. It's, uh, quite interesting. And we don't know where Amherst is either, or what else he might have up his sleeve, but... But there's hope. Dr. Candle's got the DCD on the road to a vaccine. You broke the LMBs back, and the cleaners, and the Rikers, too. We took the city back like we promised we would. We're not done yet. As long as the Dark Zone's out there, we've got our work cut out for us, but we're on our way to finally saving the city. And with it, maybe something more. Not bad for the second wave, don't you think? Confirmed. Unidentified Shade Tech Beacon located. Readings indicate an echo nearby. Well, here I am, Aaron Keener, the first wave's prodigal son. Normally I'd do this face to face, but I'm not 100% sure which way it'll jump. You act one way when Ms. Lao is watching, and another way entirely when you're off the leash. That's an interesting contradiction. You see, I think that deep down, you get it. You know, the old rules, laws, governments, those things died on Black Friday. But the feral PMCs, the convicts, the ones smart enough and good enough to take what they need, they'll survive. Me? I'm gonna prosper. Oh, you could too, but you took an oath, right? You got a duty. Those are both ways of saying that your conscience is fucking you. You ask yourself, who has earned a right to tell you what to do? Do you know how many agents died to hold the dark zone just for the brass to give up and put a wall around it? You don't believe me? You should check the place out for yourself. But the people you're working for, they're irrelevant now. Amherst changed how the game is played, and I have got the vision to win. I got Chernenko, I got a DNA printer, and a very interesting recipe book. I'm gonna write my own rules. You should think about getting in on this thing. I'll be seeing you. Agent, the information you found in that lab was the crown jewel. I think we can break this thing now. But we've got some more information. A voice from the grave. Listen to what Amherst has to say. What you're looking at is the smallpox virus, one of the deadliest pathogens on the planet. For centuries, it did a wonderful job of helping keep the human population in check. But times change, and sometimes Mother Nature needs a hand in improving her creations. Like, say, speeding them up a little bit, making them contagious when they should be quietly incubating in a host, or making them more lethal. I didn't come up with the approach on my own. My friend Vitaly is one of the pioneers in the field, and the idea has been around for years. Genome as data. You see, once we digitized DNA, we made it infinitely mutable. 
We could do a thousand virtual variations in the time it used to take to grow a one-lab-grade generation of pathogens. And we could pick the best, most lethal combinations and make them real. That's how you make a killer virus, you see. Mix in genetic code from other diseases, and you move the sliders all the way up on lethality and virulence. The goal was a 90% mortality rate. I'm not sure my green poison is going to quite hit that, but honestly, that's just details. As long as most of humanity goes, the Earth stands a fighting chance. Technically, technology is what's killing the planet. But that's not really the case. It's the greed that drives the technology. But a funny thing happened on the way to $100 genome maps and 3D printed plastic toys. Someone figured out those technologies could be repurposed, modified for the greater good. Me. Now, my virus is gonna do what nature's always done. Decide who lives and who dies. And if nature decides I die, then I die. If nothing else, I'll have a lot of company. Natural selection at its finest. Helped along by a little unnatural genetic manipulation. It's all data, really. Life's just a method of processing it. The same way I processed the smallpox genome on my laptop. And who's to say that wasn't the plan all along? If by some miracle, you survive green poison, then nature's decided you deserve to live. The rest of us shouldn't and won't. Godspeed. I'll see you in hell.